Hi, it's Marietta. Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I want to talk about how love can basically save the world and how you can save the world, especially now during this difficult time that we are all of us facing and what we are going through is just unprecedented in my life, in the history of my life and uh, chances are that in history of your life as well. So coming up, stay tuned. I do want to talk about the importance of staying high vibe, importance of staying in a love frequency. What does it even mean, this love frequency? And how can we stay there on a daily basis and how can we contribute to the change? So based on the information, like everything that's going on, you know, it started with the coronavirus um, pandemic all around the world. Then um, now all this, um, the situation, the violence that's happening in the United States, uh, and uh, the sadness of the situation and also the amount of pain and violence that people are experiencing uh, is just unprecedented and it's extremely painful and I decided to do this video because I believe that as an attorney, as a somebody who has obviously a legal background but also as an author of the book Love is the Law that I channeled a couple of years ago I believe that the only way we can solve the problem, the problem that we have, we are facing right now, we actually we are facing multiple problems, but the only way we can face, I mean, the solve the problem is to solve it from different level of consciousness. And so me as an attorney, like I choose not to engage and I choose not to even comment from the perspective of as, as, an, as an attorney, because I believe that that's not the answer. The answer for this current situation, the current challenge, the current problem is love. And I really mean it because love is not, love doesn't mean that you are, let, you let people take advantage of it. Love doesn't mean that you let people abuse you. Love doesn't mean that you let people uh, override you and cross your boundaries that that's not love love is actually an energy it's a frequency it's a state it's a state of being and so it's a state of being where you are in peace with who you are you are in peace at the same time with existence around you and you are in peace with universe and that state of peace and that state of love is your natural state and this state is missing in the world it's missing because individually uh, people are totally <laughs> coming from and reacting from lower centers in their body you can call it chakras uh, energy centers survival survival centers fear survival is being activated by everything that's going on in society and around the world and in the United States and so on. And so because of individuals who are being triggered, they are tr being triggered deeply by, by the pain and suffering that, that we are seeing and experiencing. Uh, it's just another action to reaction, right? So. So really, that's not really solving anything. The violence is not going to solve violence. If the problem in a society is the violence um, and corruption and the greed, which is again lower chakras, lower survival chakras that are running the show of individuals who are in charge. If we are reacting to this in the same way, by another violence, by another survival, by another greed, by another anger and fear, we are just fueling the energy on collectively, on collective level. And so the only way to actually break the 
vicious cycle is to change the frequency. Now, how do you change the frequency and how do you change your own reaction if you are pissed, if you are angry, if you are scared, if you are feeling violated? Like, how do you even change that? Like, it's difficult to change that because it's difficult to change it because we are not enlightened society yet, right? And so at that point, when you feel triggered by the outside reality, that's the, actually the, the moment to become aware. And I feel like this is the biggest spiritual retreat I've been on. The, the most profound, even though obviously it's not spiritual retreat, I compare it to spiritual retreat because I've done multiple different spiritual retreats um, where I have, was really facing my shadows. But I can compare it a little bit to, to give you my point, to serve my point. What I'm trying to deliver here is that the moment we are triggered by the outside reality, by the pain, the suffering, what's going on in us the riots and all of that that's the point when we need to stop and pause and choose not to react but rather respond in a loving way and this might sound a little bit as a paradox or a little bit crazy um and some of you might even call me crazy and i understand it but hear me out because like I already said, I do not respond as an attorney. I could because human rights are being violated, etc. The reason I'm not doing it is because the law is a man-made law. And the man-made law was made by men that created the law from certain level of consciousness. Because the law is basically just a tool to govern relations between people and nations, etc. So we can somehow create a system in this society. Now the law is clearly not working because even though the law is in place, it's still being um, broke and it's being um, not necessarily enforced in a way that we would like to see. So it is a reflection of the man-made state of mind, level of consciousness, whoever created and enacted the law and that at that particular time. So the solution is love. Now, the love is the, it's the, it's the consciousness, the love consciousness. Now, in order for you to get there, you need to obviously overcome your own shadows. And so the moment you are triggered is the perfect opportunity for you to pause and decide to really step into your power and be the light and love that you want to see in humanity. Because when you think about it, we consist of people. Humanity consists of people. It's like the ocean that consists of drops, right? But you are a very important part of society because society wouldn't be here without you. Without all these drops, ocean wouldn't exist. The same thing applies to society. The society wouldn't be here without you. You are very important. Now think about it. If every single one of us takes self-responsibility and stop reacting, instead pause, and step into their power, activate that power, which is love. And instead of reacting, we start responding with love. That is how we can change humanity and how we can literally raise the frequency and become different civilization. So the question is, how can we possibly pause when we feel this tremendous pain, anger, and fear coming up to the surface and that is the exact moment that is it right there that is it this is where the where the ascension for every single one of us begins ascension or awakening great awakening to fifth dimension really starts within it doesn't start outside with group awakening it starts within it starts individually it starts individually on the individual level where every single individual needs to actually activate other chakras, open up their heart and really start embodying that love frequency. 
when you embody the love frequency and you vibrate that love frequency, you feel compassion. You are able to forgive. And let me tell you, forgiveness is the key. The forgiveness is the key, especially right now. Because so much pain is coming up. So much shadows are coming up. So much darkness is coming up. But the good thing is that this darkness and these shadows and this pain need to come up so we can dissolve and we can dissolve again by shining the light. Because otherwise it's just being suppressed, right? And it's just being suppressed. And right now what's going on in US, and see, I don't even want to name what's going on because me naming what's going on and giving it labels is actually lowering the frequency. So I don't even want to go there, but you know what I'm talking about. What's going on is actually, is actually for a purpose of healing. We can only heal collectively as we heal individually. The healing starts the moment we realize that the pain is there for a reason. In fact, the pain is a vehicle. The pain is a vehicle to bring us home. And again, when I say home, I mean love consciousness. Because the pain is showing us that we need to forgive what we need to heal what we need to actually face and then what we need to transform but again if the pain and the shadows and the and the darkness is only suppressed we are not able to deal with it and we are not able to heal and we are not able to ascend and that is the purpose of great great awakening and i did a video ex exactly on this topic you can check it out where i talk about the great awakening and the purpose behind it so the purpose is really to bring up the pain, observe it, activate the love consciousness and the frequency, heal what needs to be healed by observing, by forgiving, by paying attention, by not suppressing anything. In fact, we need to acknowledge that we are in tremendous pain. I'm personally in tremendous pain. I'm, I'm going through my own personal accelerated awakening. In fact, my awakening started back in 2012, 12, 13-ish, and, and I, was, I was working hard on my, you know, myself, overcoming my shadows and pains and so on. But what's happening this year in 2020, since January, it's like, it, it feels like accelerating, accelerated, awakened training for me. And I know that the only way to go through this pain on my individual level is to observe the pain, is to observe my shadows, is to observe these fears and gently pay attention, accept them and then let them go, release them. And as, as I'm doing this individually, I'm able to become lighter and I'm able to raise my frequency and be of service, be of loving service to other people. And this needs to happen on collective level as well, because if we respond with violence, with hate, with anger, with revolution that is violent, that is not going to serve the purpose of ascending to the fifth dimension. And so I want you to understand these dynamics and this importance of really working on yourself, even though it might look again like a paradox. Why would you work on yourself if there is other people who need you? Well, let me tell you, because you can only change the world when you change yourself. You cannot change anything because you will constantly project your own shadows, your pain and your suppressed darkness within you on other people around you because there is the law of mirror in place. And so the only way for you to heal humanity is really starting work on yourself and take it very, very, very seriously. So guys, I hope you like this video. Let me know what you guys think. For those who want to dig deeper, I welcome if you check out my book, loveisthelaw.com. And also I have 21 day challenge that is going to help you to activate your inner genius, your potential that is sleeping within you. And I also have a webinar that might be useful and I'm going to share all these links below this video. If you are new, please do subscribe, hit that bell notification button and you can also check out my Instagram account where I post daily uh, content that might be 
might be useful. So thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. Love you and I'll see you soon.